YouTube! What the ancient grudge match is going on? Air of Carthage here, yes, it is gonna be Dawe versus High Elves. And uh, so I'm told that in the lore, this was actually a pretty uh, old grudge match. So we've got the, uh, the Dawe here, they got a grudge thrower and an engineer, and then the Goblobber, and then there's also a um, organ gun. And it looks as if it's unprotected, but he's got a Dragon Back Slayer deployed behind it. And the uh, Organ Gun's got a nice angle on top of this hill. Should be able to cause a lot of damage. So the uh, High Elves are actually pretty massively outranged. They did bring a couple of Eagle Claw Bolt Throwers, but the Organ Gun is actually just savaging that Bolt Thrower and then combine it with the Grudge Thrower's Focus Fire, and it's getting pretty severe. Now these Long Beards are the kind that have the shields, so it's gonna take a lot of fire from the, the Dwarf Infantry, or the uh, Elven Archers, sorry to uh, really hurt the Dwarf Infantry here. Now, I mean, if they just sat here and took it for a sustained amount of time, sure. But, um, you can see they're moving up intentionally to keep the Elven Archers off of their artillery, so the Longbeards are actually gonna move forward and hold position. And it looks like this is, um, this is actually what the Dwarves wanted. He wanted the attack on the artillery piece, and the Dragon, or the Silver Helms did it. And then the Dragon Backslayer is able to chase them away, and so now the uh, Elf player knows that he really doesn't want to be involved there. Now, they are slowed down, but it's still hard for the dwarves to keep up with a unit. Now, look, this is interesting. He's purposefully moving that organ gun back into the woods, probably to hide so that the uh, cavalry don't double back and come get it. That would be my guess. Over here, we've got the Master Ruin, Master Rune of Wrath and Ruin, doing a lot of work on the White Lions. And the Longbeards should be able to hold their ground for a little while. Uh, they're not going to hold forever, though, because these Swordmasters... Tyrion's ring is going to do nothing to the uh, the Dawe. They are way too well armored. That is a much better item to be used against lower armor factions like Skaven. Maybe Greenskins. Beastmen. That kind of stuff. This uh, Miners with Blasting Charges is just sitting back exploding the, uh, the infantry. I kind of like how he keeps it behind his lines there. Gonna keep it safe. Some long beards with great weapons gonna join the fight here, and it's gonna make it a little harder for the uh, the elves to push through. Looks like maybe all of the artillery pieces were destroyed. I mean, what is going on here? I've, some kind of weird. Yeah, it looks like the artillery pieces got destroyed for the goblobber, so it's just gonna go ahead and go into melee. Now Tyrion, of course, is tearing apart the rune lord, but after the attack, the organ gun came back, remounted. And now it's going to have a great firing position here from the top of the hill. And the elves don't have anything immediately available to counter it. Uh, the beards with great weapons and the dragonback slayers are here. They must have caught their uh, silver helms. Because I see a bunch of dead silver helms all over the ground. Siege Engineer is just staying back uh, using his ballistics calibration. Helping out the grudge thrower. There is um, still one bolt thrower. The grudge thrower is busy working on the, uh, the elven infantry. It looks like now the organ gun's gonna come under fire from the archers. Let's see whether it changes a target. Right now it's shooting into the flank of these white lions, but its line of sight may start to get obstructed here. Dragonback Slayer is also gonna come under fire here from the archers. That's definitely a problem because those Dragonback Slayers are the only unit that can really run down these archers. The Elven Infantry is not going to achieve the breakthrough at once. They're gonna get overwhelmed here. But there's going to be some healing here, and Earth Blood coming in to help out. That's coming off of the Mage Lore of Life here. And the uh, Rune Lord is getting pretty close to dying. He is using the Master Rune of Negation, which will help a lot. And the Organ Gun's still under fire from the Archers. I'm kind of surprised it hasn't turned its fire on them. But this, uh, this spot here for the Elves gets completely wrapped up. And the Rune Lord is doing what Rune Lords do, which is tanking at a, an obscene amount of damage. And uh, the Rune Lord on foot, he can tank a lot if you uh, use him right. Let's see, now it looks like the Organ Gun's finally going to get orders on the Archers. Oof, and it's going to tear him up pretty bad. And then the Archers look like they've turned to focus on the Infantry because it's broken through, so now the Organ Gun's going to be free to do its thing. And it is in a great position to kill these Archers. The angles and everything it's going to be firing at should be quite nice. The Bolt Thrower's still trying to do its work from the back. But there's a lot of Dawi moving around out here now. It looks like the archers are going to focus their attention back towards the organ gun because it is getting some some decent work done. It's got 123 kills. It's 
picked up an experienced Chevron and a half. Rune Lord finally is gonna route, and he's near dead. He fought basically to the death. The Mage of Life just kicked the bucket, and it looks like the uh, Siege Engineer, again, just kinda hanging back. He's probably trying to get shots in there. He is actually shooting. So he's got line of sight on Tyrion, I guess, because he's sticking up above the, uh, the dwarves that he's attacking. So one archer does get routed by the organ gun, though the organ gun's starting to take some pretty significant damage from the remaining archer, though it is starting to row, uh, run fairly low on ammo. And there's still enough dragon back slayers around that that's going to be a problem. Yeah, that master engineer is, is going to be a pretty tough pretty tough unit for Tyrion to take down too. Not because his melee attack is real brutal. Um, I mean, it does have armor piercing. Tyrion does not. But very high armor on the Engineer and you know he's, he's going to be a difficult unit to kill. Look at the Thane out here chasing the archers off. This archer is going to spend the rest of its ammo to get rid of the Organ Gun, but not before it got 148 kills. So this archer is now going to spend its last couple of volleys. And then these archers here being chased off. These ones came back from routing. They'll get some shots up here, but I'm not sure they have enough. And the Rune Lord came back with 30, 26 hit points. That is crazy. Absolutely crazy. He's going to use the Master Rune of Negation. And that is, that is probably disastrous for Tyrion, who is now getting shot up by the Siege Engineer. Or the Master Engineer, I should say. It's going to be hard for him to get line of sight, though, I think. He's not going to have great line of sight. He's going to have to wait till Tyrion kind of gets out of there. They really need to kind of fix some of the line of sight issues or just have the uh, units fire, even, even if it's going to cause some friendly fire. Because there's times like this where Tyrion's sticking up and actually should be a capable target, but people won't fire anyway. It's like he's going to come into melee. The Rune Lord finally dies. <laughs> You can see Tyrion puts a nasty charge on the uh, Engineer. And yeah, these units are coming back from routing, but look at this Grudge Thrower still going back here. 99 kills, 3 Chevrons. Maybe it had some before the fight, I don't remember. So I didn't catch the battle screen, but Tyrion's in trouble. He's not going to be strong enough to, to take out a Master Engineer and a Thane. Nope, and I believe there's a Tormentor Sword on that Thane. It may only work once, though. Nope, there it goes, it works. <laughs> so Tyrion's in trouble. Because he has to charge him eventually, and when he does, he's going to get hurt. So the Dawei here using an interesting um, deployment, deploying an organ gun out to the flank of an army, which actually did end up paying off handsomely with about 150 kills. It got the Silver Helm killed from coming in and attacking it. So I would say that that organ gun was worth it. Master Engineer, interesting choice here too, which I think worked out because he was buffing the artillery units and the artillery units uh, at least this one did pretty good the grudge uh, goblobber got torn up by the eagle claws but um yeah i mean this infantry white lions are pretty decent armor piercing infantry but they're not you know they're not quite as tough as something like a sword master and you can see that hacking through these dwarves takes its toll especially when you have the rune lord doing his thing um, and they just didn't get a ton of kills, you know, even, even though they're in a matchup against quite a few units that they should theoretically be able to do decent against. Now, Longbeards with Great Weapons, not a stellar anti-armor unit, but they're pretty decent, and they don't cost a ton. So, that's where you're going to get the value out of them, and if, if they don't get charged by something with big charge, they can actually do quite a bit of work because they are hard to route. They're immune to terror, which can be... pretty nice. Well, this one says, what a match, so let's see what kind of match this was. We got Acadian here. Coming up against Elysio Geli. So, Chaos gonna have Archaeon. Uh, looks like one unit of Chosen with uh, Great Weapons. And then for Chaos Warrior Great Weapon, the two Poison Warhounds working with a couple of Dragon Ogre Shagoths. So, that is gonna be a significantly dangerous anti-large combination. And then Empire is coming with cheap troops up front. Only the cheap troops, but a lot of Reichsguard. So, two of them over here. There's a Celestial Wizard supporting the Reichsguard. There is another Spearman deployed there in the woods, and then we've got uh, two Outriders, three Outriders on this flank, so Chaos does have the Warhounds, which are going to be a problem for the Outriders, so we'll see how that plays out. And then Karl Franz, uh, I don't know if this is a Griffin or Deathclaw, I believe it is Deathclaw, because of his attack stats there. 
Carl is a lot of fun, but he honestly needs a little bit more hit points. And I kind of think that Carl would be cool um, if they, I don't know, they just need to find some way to to make him stand out a little bit. He's like this legendary hero of the Empire. He's just got nothing special, really, right? There's dragons in the game, so him being on Deathclaw really isn't that threatening. He doesn't have anything that helps him, like... I don't know, like, his, his special abilities are cool, they help him do more damage, but it doesn't help the fact that he really doesn't have many hit points, and there's a ton of stuff that can kill him. And so, to me, it makes Carl way too fragile for what he should be. He can do a ton of damage in the right fight, especially if you're using Galmaraz um, and the Reichlin Runefang. But, again, still don't think he is quite what he should be. Look at those Warhounds. Look at the leadership on him. Just hit the tank when these Outriders opened up on him. There are some Pistoliers coming out here. Now, Pistoliers could be better at kiting the Warhounds because they can fire in all directions. And then there's Altdorf Griffites over here as well. So the Empire player's gone with crap infantry and a ton of cavalry, some of which is obviously meant to shoot up infantry and other units, and then some of which is uh, definitely more intended, um, like the cavalry over here is just meant to deal charge damage to infantry. So over here, it looks like the... Um, Warhound's gonna keep giving chase, but again, they, they really don't want to chase this unit. But I can see why they're making this chase. They need to take the Outriders off the field. And with the Shagoth support, there's a lot of anti-large potential there as well. The Shagoths have some missile resistance too, if I remember right. Yeah, 25%. Let's see if these Outriders are able to swing around over here. Get back to safety. Looks like they're gonna attempt that. They're going to need to stay close to uh, the Altdorf Griffites, but the Griffites have to be careful because two Shagoths would would tear them up in a hurry. It looks like he's ooh, kind of a faint there with the pistol ears. I thought he was going to sacrifice him to save the Outrider. Let's see what happens over here. The Warhounds are just going to go all in trying to get the Outriders, but the Griffites are right there. Uh, a single Griffite? I would think they could tear up the, um, the Shagoth pretty good, but maybe not. Look over here, the Reichsguard just clobbering this unit of Chaos Warriors with great weapons. That was the Zentler's Reichsguard. It caused tremendous damage on the charge. So it looks like Franz trying to single out a couple of the expensive infantry and then hit them with cavalry. The Griffites get into it, and oh my gosh, the Shagoth is taking a dump all over them. So never mind what I said about maybe being able to take that fight, because it is clearly not the case. That Shagoth has barely taken any damage to these Griffites. Comes a burning head from Archaeon. It goes right through the Outriders, but just doesn't do anything. So I can see what Archaeon was trying to do there, but isn't going to work. And over here, Franz and the cavalry are just waylaying Chaos Warriors. Two of them are dead. So that was an interesting one. And then over here, we got the Pistoliers and Outliders again running uh, running away from another Warhound. And then on this this side, the, the Griffites got absolutely destroyed. They're going to come back in for a second round. And it looks like maybe just trying to use the Spearmen and other units just to do as much damage as he can to these Shagoths. Yeah, the Griffites got owned. I wouldn't have thought that they would have had that much trouble. But, I mean, the Dragon Ogre's anti-large, anti-armor, and I don't know what I would expect different here. Let's uh, see what the Celestial Wizard was really intended to do here, uh, if I can get a beat on him. Celestial Wizard, he's got Curse of the Midnight Wind, as expected, and Wind Blast, and Harmonic Convergence. Good spells. I don't know if Wind Blast will do a lot, even Overcast, but Harmonic Convergence... And um, the Curse of the Midnight Wind would definitely be good ones. Look, it's going to undo a lot of what Archaeon did there with his spells. I don't know if that timing was intentional. So two Shagoths still distracted out here. Warhound going after these Outriders. Again, uh, Warhound's going after the Outriders and Pistoliers over here. And it looks like the Warhounds got chased off. There's some regrouped Swordsmen coming back over here. And then these Outriders are just kind of sitting back and... Firing into the blob of chaos here. Looks like a Reichsguard trying to do some cycle charges, though it's been beat up pretty badly. Wonder whatever happened to the Zentler's Reichsguard. Some spearmen here. Uh, yeah, that was the spear unit. I guess I lost track of the Zentler's Reichsguard throughout this because it was ab it was kind of owning at first. 
It looks like these uh, Warhounds are being chased to the edge of the map. That's definitely a good call. Spearmen moving back through. There's, okay, here's the Zentler Shrikes guard. It's got 41 kills. I mean, it is going to be tough to be getting tons of kills against, uh, you know, the Chaos Infantry. Shagos around, that's going to be a problem. I'm not really sure how the Empire can pull this one off. Like, I mean, the odds are definitely not in their favor. He's still got to deal with these two Chaos Warriors. And he does have a couple of Outriders that have a decent amount of ammo. But, I mean, it's going to take a lot of... It's going to take a lot to kill Shagos. And this Warhound has actually stopped routing. And it's it's chasing and catching these Outriders. So that's a problem. The Empire's in pretty rough shape here, actually. He does manage to break these infantry by terrifying them. So, once again, Chaos falls to terror. The, what's supposed to be the most terrifying faction gets terrified. <laughs> yeah, Franz needs to get away from these Dragon Ogres. That would be bad news. If the Dragon Ogres can get tied down in combat for long enough with the infantry, really get them solidly exhausted if they're not already. Maybe has to use all the ammo on the Outriders, and then maybe Franz can clean up? Maybe? Yeah, again, see Franz here going to terrorize the uh, Chaos units. So these guys should terror out, probably. Ooh, that Shagos coming. Here comes another burning head, and that one's going to get some damage done to these swordsmen. And then, ooh, that Shagos going to get a big hit on Carl before he gets away, and the, uh, the terror never kicked in on this Chosen. Now, this fight is actually okay here for the Empire, just kind of dragging Archaeon in this... Uh, Dragon Ogre into a long, drawn-out fight with spears while being shot. I mean, that's going to definitely help the Empire. These Chaos Warhounds came back from routing again. The Pistolier's going to target them and see if it can take them off the battlefield. Those Warhounds just keep coming back. Franz lands again and gets just a savage beating from the <laughs> Dragon Ogre. So Archaon's still very much alive. But we've got a Pistolier and Outriders. The Outriders still have a decent bit of ammo left. It's certainly not limitless. Then over here, some Chaos Warriors with great weapons. Gonna be brought back into the fight, so still very much in Chaos favor here. And oh, Carl! So let's see what happens. See if Carl, ooh, Carl just barely got away from that. He has really got to stay in the air. I mean, there's a ton of spears here. This is really good for the Empire. If Carl can just, like, kind of camp right above them and try and keep their leadership up, let the spearmen kind of just wear these guys down, I think is going to be the way to go. Better get the Outriders away from here just in case they get terrified. Look at that. One Dragon Ogre actually about to rout. It's going to be a big deal. And if it comes down to just Archaon. Now, Archaon, he's got some power to him. Oh, look at the Carl getting risky, acting like he's going to charge. What happened to the, uh, the Warhound over here? Did it get chased off? I think it got chased off. Pistolier still got just a bit of ammo on it. So, I mean, it still says it's in favor of Chaos. But, I mean, all these spearmen being left here at the end, and the Dragon Ogres have no choice but to try and just tank out a ton of spearmen. And so, same thing with Archaon, and he's on his mount, so that's going to, again, work against him. And then it allows Carl to do stuff like this. He's going to route that Chosen. And the Outriders are going to use all of their ammo, every last bit of it. And it is taking its toll on the Shagoths. And if the Shagoths can be routed, Archaon could potentially be dealt with here. Potentially. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be easy, but... I still say that this is kind of almost in favor of Chaos. I could be wrong. That Dragon Ogre, though, he is getting shot up. And it is taking a toll. But, I mean, he's, even though it looks pretty bad, I mean, he's still got 1,800 hit points. All right, so all the uh, Empire Infantry is routed. The uh, Reichsguard uh, both regrouped and charged, but then also got terrorized and routed. There's an Outrider out here that has just a hair of ammo. And the Pistoliers have just a little bit of ammo. So he needs to use up all of his ammo, regroup his units, see if he can get rid of one Dragon Ogre, maybe. Or <laughs> the one Dragon Ogre, I should say. This Reichsguard's being used to kind of keep them occupied, and then Carl's going to go for a charge. He lands it, and it does huge damage. 
but then he's gonna get hit in the back by Archaeon. But he did route the Dragon Ogre, and then nice play here to use the uh, Outriders to keep Archaeon off of Carl's back. This was actually clutch right there, so that was a huge play from Carl. Now when you look at things, you've got some of these regrouped Chaos Infantry, and there's a fairly decent number of them. But I mean, it's gonna be hard for just infantry. And then Archaeon, yeah, I don't, he's tough. He's definitely a, a tough unit. I mean, he's got insane melee attack and huge defense. Let's see what happens. This one's gonna be close, folks. It still says it's in favor of Chaos. Now, if these Chosen really had the kind of leadership that people would kind of expect out of them, this, this could get really ugly for the Empire here, but I'm not sure if their leadership can hold up, especially if Carl dive bombs, which he is, and he went after the Chosen, and it's likely to rout them. So the Chaos Warriors, they're gone. The Chosen, gone, and that leaves Archaeon alone. But look, st oh my goodness, I thought this Shagoth, one of them must not have died, it must have routed. But if Carl charges, which he can, and does, that's the second Dragon Ogre. Still does not fling the power bar in favor of the Empire, so right now the auto resolve is liking Archaeon's chances, and he does have 150 kills. It looks like Carl is gonna try and use the infantry to occupy him while he lands some big charges. That makes sense, I mean, feed everybody in, keep him busy, and then hit him with your high charge unit that can dive bomb from the air. Archaeon's using uh, his cascading fire cloak or sword of ruin, whichever one it was there. Oof. Franz is going to be putting some painful charges down, but again, huge melee defense on Archaeon. So again, you can see it still sits in favor of the uh, <laughs> of the Chaos Warriors. I don't really know who's going to win this because Archaeon is starting to rout a lot of the Empire Infantry. Ooh, right there though, you can see the power bar just swung a little bit because of the big charge that Carl landed. Yeah, that that may may have made the difference. And then here comes another charge. Yeah, Carl lands another charge and that even the power bar. Oh man, this is going to be close, folks. This is going to be close. Carl is extremely low, and the units around him are fairly demoralized, but Archaeon is low, and he's surrounded, and he gives in. That was close. That was super close. Imagine if Archaeon had the fireball there at the very end, right? Carl's flying around, he could pop him with the fireball. I know it wouldn't have done, like, as much damage, you know, because Carl was armored, but I wonder if something like that would have made a big difference in the end instead of those uh, burning heads that didn't end up making a ton of difference. I don't know, just just a thought. Fun replay, though. Fun replay from Acadian and, and Lysio, man. Guys, that was close. That was a heck of a battle. So thank you to both of you for an awesome battle there. Hope you all enjoyed this one. If you did and you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. And when you do subscribe, if you actually want to know when I upload a video, there's a bell right next to the subscribe button because apparently subscribe doesn't mean subscribe to YouTube. <laughs> so if you want to be notified when there's going to be new videos and you've either subscribed already or are subscribing, click the bell. It'll actually notify you, and you can be the first to see it. So thank you for being here today. I will see you soon with some more Total War Warhammer 2 action.